what is going on everybody welcome on into ttp sports it's been a little bit you now since we talked some flyers hockey but hey this flyers team has been very fun lately they've been very very fun to watch there have won three straight games so far they've been playing good hockey as of late sadly like you know i've been talking about with you know the past recap you know with the whole new kitten and all that so that's where my mind's been mainly at lately but like i said i apologize for the lack of consistency but we'll get more consistent as the day goes along and the as the kitten progresses to get more comfortable in the house but hey we get to talk about, you know, some Flyers after dark tonight. A little Flyers against, you know, a young up-and-coming Arizona Coyotes team. It's sad to say still that they play in a college arena, and I still don't know how much longer they're going to play in a college arena. Are they ever going to get a new arena? Are they going to move out of Arizona? I have no idea what the NHL wants to do. That's Gary Bettman's baby, the Arizona Coyotes. So who knows what is going to happen in that case. But, hey. You get yourself a 4-1 victory. I thought you played a pretty solid game. You know, long travel going from Philly to Arizona. You know, I, I didn't think they played their best game, but I felt they were very opportunistic in this game. This kind of reminds me of, I would say, a few other games in, you know, in situations where the Flyers lost games. I could say, you know, Arizona, they had a lot of possession in the Flyers offensive zone. It kind of looked like the Flyers in certain aspects of this game were definitely playing on their heels. But they pounced on Arizona mistakes. The Flyers' penalty kill has been absolutely dynamic as of late. It's becoming one of the best penalty kills in the league. And they scored their seventh shorthanded goal tonight, thanks to Travis Konechny and his beautiness. Like, this, pow this penalty kill, 20 billion times better than the power play. They score more on the penalty kill than they do on the power play. I don't even think the Flyers got a power play in this game. And... Once again, it's another game where the Flyers, you know, do not allow a power play goal. They've been on an awesome stretch with the penalty kill. They've scored a couple of shorthanded goals as of late, too, especially, you know, in that home-and-home -home series against the Pittsburgh Penguins where the Flyers won both of those games. And those were some pretty exciting games down to the wire going into the shootout and the overtime. You know, Tyson Forrester showed up in those two games, which was very fun to see. And it's very fun to see the progression of Tyson Forrester, especially in the two-way side of things. I know a lot of people are very excited about his shot and everything, the puck going in the back of the net finally for him but when I look at Tyson Forrester I just get so giddy looking at his two-way game and the way that is developing where it just looked like he knows where to be on the ice he knows what when to make the right play whether it's just a simple chip play off the boards into the neutral zone or he makes a nice chip pass off the boards which springs a nice little odd man rush which leads to a goal for the Flyers, it's just those little details. And the forechecking, too. He back-checks, he forechecks. He does a little bit of everything there. And I think you're starting to see a little bit of that confidence develop in Tyson Forrester, which is more now resulting in the puck going in the back of the net. And I think that was eventually going to happen. That, sadly, he didn't score in this game. But I still thought he put a nice little, you know, how do you do together. And that first line note, Konechny scores a couple of goals in this game, one off of a nice face-off win from Sean Couturier, and TK just wires one right off the rip from the face-off dot, and it becomes a one nothing Flyers lead. Joel Farabee attacking the net after, you know, Arizona had some offensive zone pressure. The Flyers, they get the puck, they finally get out of the zone, and then, you know, Cam York, you know, brings the puck up, makes a nice pass to Cam Atkinson, who makes another beautiful pass to Joel Farabee, who's just driving the net so it's nice to see Joel Farabee get on the board. He's been a little bit in towards his doghouse as of late. We all know a couple of games ago against the New Jersey Devils where he made the one mistake on the early Devils goal and he was benched basically the rest of the game. You know, he's been a little bit of towards his doghouse late, so it's nice to see him get on the score sheet there. First time at a little bit there for Mr. Joel Farabee. So hopefully that just sparks something going in a good direction for him because he definitely needs it. And I don't even think he's been playing bad. I think he's just doing those little mistakes. He doesn't back check. He doesn't get back into the play. And I think, you know, when you're playing John Tortorella hockey, you got to give it 150,000%. And, you know, Joel Farabee's not giving that extra oomph. And that's getting under the skin of Tortorella a little bit. So he's getting a little bit in that doghouse situation. Nowhere close to as bad as Morgan Frost. But, you know, with the whole Noah Cates situation, 
him being out for six to eight weeks, you know, Morgan Frost is getting that chance to, I guess, showcase himself for one last time. So hopefully he can make the most of it and we'll see how that goes. But still overall, just a very good win by this Flyers team going on this little bit of a West Coast road trip again. And they're just playing very fun hockey, man. Going into that game against the Pittsburgh Penguins at home after they won the game in the shootout in Pittsburgh, that was one of the loudest, you know, most energized games I've seen from the Wells Fargo Center in a long time. And the Wells Fargo Center this year has definitely been a lot more energized. And I think fans are starting to buy back into the team, you know, even during this rebuild phase. And this team is definitely playing way above expectations. They're playing a good brand of hockey. They're playing a fun brand of hockey. They're playing very aggressive. They get them on the forecheck. They take chances. They take risks, especially with the defense. They like to jump into the play. They like to pinch. They like to try to go after those loose pucks. And yeah, eventually, when you have, when you be that over aggressive it's going to turn into odd man rushes going the other way but over time you're going to find this team more successful in that type of situation when you get more talent on the roster some more young talent on the roster and John Tortorella has already stated that, that he's preparing this team to play this specific style for when they get better young talent into the roster. When, you know, a guy like a Cutter Gauthier eventually comes on the roster, most likely, I would assume, at the end of the season. When a Matave Michkov comes over from Russia, as John Tortorella likes to call him the Mad Russian, it's some very fun stuff. You know, Torts, after the Pittsburgh series, after that first game against Pittsburgh, where, honestly, they didn't play their best hockey, both teams. Like, seriously, the Pittsburgh Penguins are not that good of a team. They're a very old team. They, they just, they're trying to go on this final push with the uh, core that they got there, it's, it's not pretty. It is not pretty. Their power play sucks. I honestly, I think I saw a power a power play that was worse than the Philadelphia Flyers, and I didn't think that was physically possible. Well, in those two games against the Pittsburgh Penguins, I saw something that was worse than the Flyers' power play, and that was the goddamn Penguins' power play. The Flyers got more changes shorthanded than the Penguins had on any of their power plays. It was that ridiculous. And then it turns into the overtime victory. You know, Tyson Forrester, before the overtime, made a nice play that set up a nice little three-on-two. TK with a beautiful pass, and Forrester just with a beautiful rip past the goaltender. And then you get that... Brilliant play by Travis Sandheim off the faceoff in overtime as, you know, Crosby and Gensel pinch off the faceoff. Sandheim wraps it around the boards. TK brings it up for a nice little two-on-one, a little bit of a floater pass over the Coots, who just buries the puck. And just continuing into this game, TK with a couple of goals, a nice beauty on the shorthanded chance, you know, pushing it up, getting that loose puck, beating the defenseman, and just, you know, a nice little top shelf on the goal, beauty of a finish there. And then you also got a nice beauty of a finish by Cam York in the third period, where it looked like at the end of the second period, you know, halfway towards the end of the second period, basically that entire process through. I know I'm all over the place right now. That's basically how long since I've talked about the Flyers in a little bit here, so bear with me a little bit. I'm trying to recap everything at once here. It's probably not going the best, but you understand what I mean in this instance. The Flyers have been playing very fun hockey as of late. That's the only thing that matters at this point. But Cam York in the beginning of the third period, after you know the Flyers were basically playing in their zone for a big chunk of that end of the second period, it was basically just survive the entire way through. And they did end up surviving, not allowing a goal and still staying with the two-goal lead. And then you get very early in the third period, Travis Sanheim with a nice play that you know, didn't result in a goal, but he drives the net. Goaltender has to make a save there. And then here comes Cam York not so long later off the left side. You know, does a little bit of a fake toe drag, whatever you want to call it. Gets into the left circle and just roofs it. I'm like, what the hell? Where did this fucking come from, from Cam York? <laughs> and it's not to say, like, what the hell is, you know, where did this come from, from Cam York? I thought Cam York overall this season has played some pretty, you know, solid two-way hockey. And he's definitely stated about, you know, because a lot of people expected him to bring a lot of offense from the defensive side. And Cam York definitely says that hasn't been affecting his game a little bit. He's not worried about the points. They'll eventually come for Cam York, I think, as he progresses in this league. Is he going to be a top defenseman on this team? I'm not entirely sure. Is he going to be, you know, a top guy on a second pair? Is he going to be a number two type of defenseman? I have no idea. Or is he going to be a number one? I don't know what Cam York fully is going to be right here. He only has a little bit of a chunk and change here. 
in the National Hockey League. Is it going to take a little bit of time, more time for him to blossom into what the type of defenseman he could probably be? I have no idea, but it, you know, it's nice to see him get on the score sheet a couple of times here. And basically, just from that instance, the Flyers just, you know, three goal lead, just play with the lead, play defense, you know, dump and chase, whatever you got to do to kill time off the clock. And that's basically it. Arizona Coyotes, they are, you know, a nice little story here in the league so far. Nice young team, nice, very skilled team. They were on a six game winning streak coming into this game. And I think in their like last five games, they've only allowed like five or six goals. So they were definitely on a little bit of a heater coming into this. But hey, Flyers don't care. They go into a 5,000 seat college arena in the University of Arizona or Arizona University, whatever you want to call it, or whatever university it is. And they, they just go there and handle their business. So <laughs> I, I still find it weird that an NHL team plays in a college arena. That just boggles my mind that we're just at that stage. But, you know, Gary Bettman refuses to uh, move that Arizona team, but they have hinted that they might be getting a new arena soon. So most likely they. I would assume they are staying in Arizona, but I have no idea at this point what's going to be happening with that team. But they got, you know, a couple of nice young players there in that system. You know, Logan Cooley's nasty. They still got Clayton Keller. They got a couple of other young guys on that team that they're building through drafts and all that stuff. So they're a nice little story here, and let's see if they can, you know, continue to do what they're doing in the grand scheme of things. But overall, this Flyers team, just fun hockey to watch, man. I think that's all that matters. And looking at some of the players here, in terms of points, TK gets a couple of points on the day. I believe Cam York got a couple of points, too. So that was good to see there. Carter Hart. Basically, I wouldn't say Arizona didn't have many things that were dangerous in this game. It kind of felt like a lot of stuff was to the outside. And for a lot of their power plays, they didn't really generate much. They The one goal that they did score was like on the last stages of the power play where when it just ended where it was a dump and chase cam york you know misplayed where the you know he tried to go after the puck carrier instead of the guy that was playing in the slot and he was left wide open there for a pass and he just buried it behind carter hart that was the only goal they scored hart did make some big saves in this game when arizona was controlling it in the flyer zone for a bit of time there but still it's carter hart he stands tall that's what he does at this point for this team and he's been very good up up to that you know position and it's really good to see there from Mr. Hart even Sam Harrison too in the games that he has played lately he you know since Carter Hart went down with that injury a while ago he got his confidence back from that situation he's been playing really good hockey and that is as ever since he played in that you know road game against the um Pittsburgh Penguins when they won in the shootout and that was really good to see and I think Harrison I believe he played in the shootout against the New York Islanders where they won that, and he also won another shootout, so I believe he's like perfect in the shootout so far, has not allowed a goal there, so that's cool to see in that instance. But looking at this Flyers team right now, looking record-wise in terms of, you know, where they are in the Metropolitan Division, they're second place in the Metropolitan Division, 14-10-2. Who would have thought at this point the Flyers would be second place in the Metro Division? That is crazy. That is absolutely bonkers. Columbus Blue Jackets, they're a dumpster fire. Pittsburgh Penguins, I don't view them as a good team. The New Jersey Devils, they have been very up and down. The Washington Capitals, they got hot for a little bit, but I think they're coming back down to earth again. The Carolina Hurricanes right now are a mess on the road. That That's just, you know crazy at that point in the New York Islanders they're in third place so a bit of chaos here in the Metropolitan Division that's where we stand right there and in terms of the entire league and everything at this point Flyers are 12th in the league ranked I want to see the Flyers stats on the penalty kill that's what I want to see too if I can get to um NHL.com here just to see the uh the team stats in terms of penalty kill. Where's the team's at? Where's the penalty kill stat? I need to see this. Penalty kill, penalty kill, penalty kill. Where are they? Right. The Flyers rank sixth in the penalty kill. They have an 85.4% penalty kill rate. That is actually really good. Nasty penalty kill there, man. How many shorthanded goals have they scored so far this year? I want to see that. Is that a thing here on, um, on the uh, stat thing here? Is there like an expanded thing? Is there an expanded thing? I need to see uh, shorthanded goals. Can I see shorthanded goals? Is there a thing? Is there a thing? Can I see shorthanded goals? I think I don't even think I see that. Uh, goals for, goals against, power play, penalty kill. No, I, I don't think I see any shorthanded goals. I don't think I see that. But I do think the Flyers have like seven or eight as a team. 
So they've definitely been scoring a lot of shorthanded goals here. In terms of some other guys on the team right here in terms of points, you know, TK leading the way. He's got 14 goals on the season after scoring two today. Like, you know, no one's running away with, you know, blowing out offense here, but it's really just evened out at this point. TK, 21 points. Sean Couturier, 18. Travis Sanheim, 18. Uh, Faraby has 16. Goal leaders for this team, you know, TK is 14. Faraby has 9. Atkinson has 8. Tippett has 8. Forrester is getting up there. He's got 5 and on a little bit of the heater that he's been playing lately. That line of uh, Fair of uh, Forrester, Coots, and TK have actually been really good this year. I've liked what they've done. I've really liked what they've done. And Coots hasn't really missed a beat He's been playing some really good hockey. It takes him a little bit to get going into the games, but when he eventually gets going, he does look like the Sean Couturier of old. We're going to see how that, you know, the whole, th- you know, missing a couple of years with the back surgeries, how that's going to age out as he gets older. But with the way that he's playing, coming off of two back surgeries, like, dude's a fucking warrior at, this, at the end of the day. He's a fucking warrior. And he just does what he can, man. Coots is a goddamn warrior. That's all I'll say there. I want to see Hart's stats on the year. What's Hart's he doing here? Hart, 8, 6, and 1. 2, 4, 5 goals against with a 9, 16 save percentage. Arison's definitely getting his numbers back there, but his save percentage does need to get a little bit better. He's been a lot better as of late in terms of the way that he's been playing. He's been one of the better goalies in the league when he plays, but I think it's just, you know, those few beginning games of the season where he allowed a lot of goals on few shots where his save percentage really took a dip there. But overall, he's still been playing really good as of late. So, two goalies playing really good as of late, which is very fun to see. And looking at the upcoming schedule for this Flyers squad, they play this Saturday against the uh, Colorado Avalanche. And then they have two days off after that, and they play the Nashville Predators on the road. So, two more games left in this West Coast trip. They got two games at home on the 14th and the 16th of December, Washington and Detroit. Detroit will be a tough game. Same thing with Washington. That's always a tough game. Then they go on the road for one game. They play the Devils back at home against the uh, Predators. Then they go on the road back-to-back there against the uh, Detroit Red Wings on the 22nd. Then they go on their Christmas break. And then they go on their Western Canadian road trip against uh, Vancouver. They go to Seattle which I guess they add to the Western Canadian road trip, even though Seattle's in, you know, Washington. Uh, then they play Calgary on New Year's Eve, and then I think they close out that against Edmonton on January 2nd. So, yeah. Playing some fun hockey. Playing some fun hockey. It's very fun to watch here, boys. It's all that matters at the end of the day. Who would have thought your Philadelphia Flyers second place in the Metro on December 8th? December 8th, their second place in the Metro. That's how much chaos is going along here in the Metropolitan Division. I love it, though. I love it. Let's see how it continues, boys. Let's see how it continues. And, like, you know, one little thought here before we end it off. I know there's probably still a lot of people, you know, the miserable people that are still upset that the Flyers are not losing games. That try to get, you know, into a higher pick in the draft lottery. To that, you got two first-round picks in this year's draft. The Flyers have, de- you know, Jonesy, Danny Breer, they've already stated that whatever they do this season, it's not going to, you know, derail what they do with the trade deadline. They'll still move off pieces. They'll build for the future more. They're going to focus on the future more than the now. That's basically what it's going to be. They're not going to derail from the plan just because they're playing good hockey right now. That's not going to be the case. That's just simply not going to be the case. This draft that's upcoming, it's a very weak draft. Not very high echelon talent. It's really just, you know, the first two picks, and that's basically it. And those two guys are not even, like, they're good players, but they're not, like, franchise, you know, echelon players that completely over, you know, change your franchise. Take two first-round picks in this year draft. Maybe you get an extra one and say maybe you trade a, you know, Rasmus Ristolainen has been coming up in trade rumors lately, you know, specifically with the Toronto Maple Leafs of a, t- of a team that is very desperate for a defenseman. Gives up a first-round pitch. You know, Sh- Sean Walker's also been mentioned out there, you know, for teams that, you know, and Sean Walker's been really good this year. So maybe he can drive a price up for the way that he is playing from a desperate, you know, team that needs to get into the playoffs or something like that. We'll see. But you got two first-round picks this year, so... Use those, you know, draft, you know, 
I trust this team right now with the way that they're trying to prioritize the development system. You know, Danny Brian, Keith Jones, and all that stuff. They'll be fine. They'll be fine in that aspect. It's just some people that choose to be miserable on the social media realm choose to be miserable. But hey, how, like how how can you hate this with the way they're playing right now? How can you hate it? I don't. I simply do not hate it. I enjoy watching this team on a daily basis. It's much more fun than the slop that we've been getting the past couple of years, honestly. Regardless if it's the rebuild or not. It's been fun. It's been fun. It's all that matters. So, appreciate you guys here for tuning in. For the uh, people that have tuned into this. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It does me a great deal of service. Like I said, I do apologize for the lack of consistency, but like I said, you know, with the kitten and all that stuff that we just got, priorities have been going to there to make him comfortable in the house. But as we get, you know, as the days progress and he gets more comfortable, we'll get getting more consistent back here. So definitely don't worry a thing about that. In terms of this weekend, I won't be home the next few days. So Sunday we'll be back for Eagles and Cowboys. We'll be back to recap that. So don't worry about that. And we'll get more consistent as the week goes along after that. So... Definitely we'll get more consistent as the weekend goes along in the next week, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to use the code T2B Sports Sea Geek. $20 off your first purchase. Great deal. Don't pass it up. Thanks, guys, for uh, tuning into this. I'll see you next time.